So, hello, my name's Alison Kenny, and I used to work for many years as an archivist at the City of Westminster Archive Centre. And this is Matthew Houlihan, who's an actor, who's going to be joining me this afternoon as we take a look at some uh, of the fine examples of 19th century entertainments. So, uh, the Archive Centre is actually full of adverts for the most weird and wonderful shows which took place in Westminster in the 19th century. Uh, and the first example we're going to look at is this one. It's very detailed mm -hmm. and it's for 24 curious canary birds exhibited <laughs> by Monsieur Dujon of Paris at 23 New Bond Street. Do we know the date of this advert? Yes, uh, more or less. It's been dated to the 1820s or 30s, so uh, that's the reign of George IV or possibly uh, mm. his brother William IV. I see that the text at the top of this is in French. Uh, do we, uh, is, is Monsieur Dujon saying that the birds are Dutch and that this is the first time it's been in the UK? Yes, yes, it does look as if it is. Um, yes, he says it's the first time the birds have been in England and uh, he goes on to say that he has the honour of alerting lovers of rarities to this spectacle which is as amusing as it is admirable, as we've got this marvellous phrasing here. Yes. Um, and he can take the show into patrons' own houses. And he's giving several performances starting at three o'clock and uh, going on until ten o'clock. And I, I see here that the pictures of the birds are rather small, they're not very clear. Can we look at them a, a bit closer in detail? Yes, we can. Well, the first thing I need to point out is that the paper advert has suffered some damage and uh, parts are missing. Mm. Uh, you can see where the conservator has filled them in with repair paper here and here. Uh, and the surface of some of the pictures has been rubbed a bit. So uh, I want to focus on three of the pictures. Mm. Uh, uh, is there a common theme? Yes, for two of them there is a common theme and it's military uh, and we need to bear in mind that 1820 is just a few years after the end of the Napoleonic Wars and if we look at the bottom left hand picture you can see a sentinel in military uniform carrying a sword down here <laughs> and a gun up here and uh, the text of the advert says that this bird at the word of command will undress and go to his cage in full flight. And then if we move on to the picture above the wall on the bottom right, uh, so this oh. one over here, we can see a dramatic scene with a cannon operated by one bird pointing at the bird on the left and uh, who is described as a deserter. <laughs> and uh, the text says the deserter who upon being taken up is tried by a court martial and sentenced to be shot. <laughs> Uh, and it goes on to say the execution takes place and another is ready with a match who fires the gun at his comrade at a distance of five feet, drops down apparently dead. Um, so uh, firstly it says one of his comrades brings a wheelbarrow to fetch the dead deserter away to bury him. This all sounds rather traumatic. Yes. yes um, that's what was the third picture you wanted to show? Right, well, the picture in the middle on the bottom row there is called Le Feu d'Artifice, which mm. translates as artificial fire, uh, and it shows several canaries on what appears to be a wheel. Mm. Uh, and if we look at the text, yes, it says several of these canary birds being at liberty together will remain amidst a beautiful display of fireworks without exhibiting the least agitation and will go to their cage at the word of command. It sounds very cruel to have these canaries so close to fires. Yes, yes it does. I'm not at all sure that this show would be licensed these days. <laughs> um, if we look at the end of the advert, we can see that while the canaries are performing their tricks, here, Mademoiselle Dujon, presumably the daughter, will be performing several skillful acts of agility in a surprising manner, whatever that means. <laughs> Acrobatics, I suppose. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I see the ticket prices are displayed here as well. Two shillings for the front seats, one shilling for the back seats, and half price for children. I mean, what does that come to in today's money? Well, looking on the internet, it appears that one shilling in 1820 would be about five pounds today. Mm -hmm. um, and so two shillings, the top price, would be ten pounds. It's almost like one of those flea circuses that they mm -hmm. talk about. It's, it's, it's very awesome. much along that theme. Yes. Um, but I imagine that there was a little bit of artifice with, with <laughs> quite a bit. Yes, it must be, yeah. Um, what a cute uh, concept. 
Very eccentric. Yes. The Java sparrows, uh, and looking at pictures of these Java sparrows, some of them seem really extremely similar to the performing canaries we just saw. And uh, the venue also appears to be the same, the number 23 New Bond Street. Are we to assume that this is from uh, dated from around the same time? Yes, but I think possibly slightly later, 1838, this one. And uh, you're right that the sentinel and the cannon scene and the fireworks are essentially the same. But uh, I chose this item for the text as much as the pictures. Uh, the main heading says Java Sparrows, uh, extraordinary company, scientific Java Sparrows, just arrived in London. And it goes on to say, having finished their education at the University of Oxford, where they met with the greatest approbation from the Vice Chancellor, the collegians and the mayor and the inhabitants of that learned city, uh, which incidentally is my own university, so that, that heightens the interest from my point of view. Um, they are now perfect in the following seven languages. Chinese, English, French, German, Italian, Russian and Spanish. <laughs> it sounds amazing and, and possibly too good to be true. Um, I should think. Yes, yes, precisely. Well, it gets more amazing still in the next part um, because it says they will find out um, of a pack of cards the letters composing the names of any lady or gentleman as they have previously shown it themselves to the birds. And after those said letters should have been shuffled with the remainder of the pack. Uh, and apparently the sparrows could do the same with numbers. And then I like this, that I like this bit, it says, a watch being shown to the bird, a little, the little animal will tell the hour and every quarter. And it also gives the price of admittance again, doesn't it? One shilling, but children and servants, half price. I don't remember any mention of servants in the previous one. No, no, you're right, servants were mentioned in the previous one. Um, and interestingly, it says at the end, the proprietor will dispose of any of the above learning birds, if any lady or gentleman is desirous of purchasing them. <laughs> Crikey, that's, they, they've certainly worked out how to, to make money out of their audience. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah. This is by far the most stunning one I've seen. Wonderful coloration here. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Well, we're now going to look at some items relating to the Royal Aquarium, which was built in 1876 on Tothill Street in Westminster, mm -hmm. uh, where the Methodist Central Hall now stands, and it has stood mm -hmm. since 1904. Um, and as you can see, the centrepiece of the uh, Royal Aquarium was a glass house containing a winter and summer garden here. Wow. It looks a little bit like the Crystal Palace, which was built uh, for the Great Exhibition in 1851. Now, given it's called the Royal Aquarium, I assume that there was actually an aquarium in it. Yes, I agree. It does remind me of the, uh, the central arm of the Crystal Palace as well. And uh, yes, there was indeed an aquarium there. And uh, we're getting a hint of this in the two fish at the bottom of the advert here, which you can see on the corners. Moving on to the next advert, we can see the aquarium here with the uh, summer and winter garden behind. Mm. Now, who is this gentleman uh, in the very fine looking clothes in the front here? Well, he's George Laybourne, otherwise known as Champagne Charlie, um, from the most famous song that he yes. performed. And I think they used to do it on that old, uh, the old time musical show from the Leeds Palace of Varieties, mm. which was on the television uh, as the good old days in the 1970s, oh, the yes. one where the audience as well as the performers were dressed up in Victorian clothes. With the great Robert Lindsay. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, what is this song he's singing here? It, now, judging by the uh, title, it looks as if it's called Lounging in the Ack. Yes, it is. And of course, the act here is short for aquarium. Um, can you see that the lyrics are reproduced oh. below the picture? Lounging in the act, lounging in the act, that against all other modes of killing time I'll back. Fun that's never slack, eyes brown, blue and black, make me feel in paradise while lounging in the act. <laughs> Yeah, catch a little ditty. <laughs> and uh, by the time of this amber, which was 1880, uh, the Royal Aquarium was moving towards being a music hall, having started out hosting opera. Uh, and the Aquarium Theatre at the west end of the building 
was renamed the Imperial Theatre in 1879. And uh, from 1901 to 1903, it had a very famous manager in the actress Lily Landry, a former mistress of Edward VII, where he was Prince of Wales. All the big names. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're still on the music hall theme. Um, the Royal Aquarium hosted various weird and wonderful performances, and uh, here we can see William Beckwith, who was part of a family who did swimming tricks. This is a very colourful, stunning advert. When does this date from? Uh, well, this one dates from 1882, which is well into Queen Victoria's reign. Um, and if we look more closely at the pictures, we can see William Beckwith in the centre with his costume covered in medals, which he'd won for swimming. Mm. Now, what are the tricks he's doing here? Well, if we look at the top left, it shows him semi-reclining and smoking a very long clay pipe underwater. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> what are the other ones? The... Uh, well, at the top right, he's lying on his right-hand side and right elbow, uh, and he's sleeping underwater, it says. Wow. Uh, and then at the bottom left, he's turning a somersault underwater, uh, and then finally at the bottom right, he's drinking from a bottle underwater. Water. They're all pretty amazing tricks to do underwater. <laughs> what is the scene that we see in the background there? Well, he, he seems to be diving off a cliff to swim out uh, to a couple of people here uh, in the water whose boat has capsized. Oh my gosh. Very nice use of the, the framing of the, of the background mm. and the foreground yeah. to, to compose this, yes. this advert. Pretty yes. cool. Yes. It must be one of the earliest examples of kind of collage, really. Hmm. Mm, I wonder. Yeah. Ah, now it looks as if the text of this advert relates to the last picture we saw. Yes, this dates from November 1881, and it's an advert for swimming and diving entertainment staged by Professor Beckwith, who uh, is described as many years champion swimmer and uh, instructor to head educational institutes of England. And the entertainment is provided by Miss Beckwith, heroine of the 100 hour swim, and Willie Beckwith, the present champion of England and long distance champion of the world, having defeated Captain Webb. Now, I think I see a description of some of the tricks that we saw on the previous poster, uh, including uh, drinking a bottle of milk under the water, yes. smoking underwater, and doing the somersaults underwater, but I can't see any reference to the sleeping underwater. Uh, no, no, I can't either. But, but if we look at item three, it mm. says he's eating two sponge cakes underwater, <laughs> which is extraordinary. Uh, and later on it says he's imitating a pawpaws, which is more <laughs> likely. Um, and later still it says that he is undressing underwater. And of this Beckwith, it says that she's waltzing, for which she is greatly celebrated, and also that she'll be demonstrating the chest stroke, breast stroke, I suppose, by which she's accomplished all her marvellous feats of endurance. Firstly, 20 miles in the River Thames before 300,000 people. Mm. Uh, secondly, her 30 hours continuous swim, and uh, thirdly, her gigantic swim of <clears throat> 100 hours. And in another trick, she swims with her hands and legs tied. It looks as if they're ending the show with a demonstration here of life-saving. Yes, yes, it says that Willie Beckwith takes the part of the drowning man, and Miss Beckwith shows the easiest and safest way of saving life from drowning. That's a pretty exciting bill. Mm, yes, it is. Well, we hope you've enjoyed looking at this snapshot of the uh, adverts for the, some of the weird and wonderful shows. And of course, the uh, City of Westminster Archives also has a very large collection of theatre programmes and theatre playbills. So uh, if you've been intrigued and want to find out more, you can come along to the City of Westminster Archives Centre, which is at number 10 St Anne's Street. That's Anne without the E. Uh, and London SW1P2DE and it's uh, round the corner from Westminster Abbey just a short walk from St James's Park Tube Station and it opens uh, Tuesday to Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning and on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday it closes at 7 o'clock and Friday and Saturday it closes at 5 o'clock in the evening but you need to look at the website to uh, 
to book in an appointment during the uh, period of the pandemic. So the website details are www.westminster.gov.uk and then a forward slash archives. Thank you.